Reptiles. Slithery and scaly, you can find these creatures all over Missouri. But how much do we really know about them? Every spring, as the landscape of Missouri starts to flourish once again, a certain type of animal comes out of hibernation. Slithering, crawling, and walking from their hibernation areas, reptiles come to bask, hunt, and relocate, as is their nature. But as much interaction as there is between humans and reptiles, there's a large amount of uneducated beliefs people have about these scaly animals. I decided to ask some local Missouri citizens what they thought when they heard the word reptile. Scaly. Cool looking. Scary. Sulky. Cute. Slimy. Cold-blooded. Beneficial. With such a wide range of opinions and beliefs on reptiles, I decided to ask some experts to shed some light on the subject. My name's Dora Mitchell. I teach biology at Jefferson College, and one of the things I enjoy most is being able to share information about Missouri reptiles and amphibians. But in particular, with the reptiles, I really enjoy talking about common snapping turtles, three-toed box turtles, uh, fence lizards, the various skinks that we have in Missouri, and of course, the wide variety of snakes, whether it's venomous or non-venomous, such as black rat snakes and um, copperheads. I asked Dora to clear up some myths about snakes that she has heard in her lifetime. Whenever I talk to my students about the reptiles, I think my favorite group is the snakes because there is so much misinformation out there about them. Um, various things that you will hear will be things like snakes are very slimy, but in fact, they're actually very dry. They have a very dry, scaly skin. I hear a lot of times people will describe a snake to me and it's about as long as their arms will reach and about as big around as they can make their arms, when in fact, a lot of snakes may only be just a few inches or so. So I will also hear a lot of times people will say, well, if it has patterns on it, it's on land, it must be a copperhead. And if it's a snake near water, it must be a cottonmouth. It's almost like there's only two types of snakes, when in reality, there are several non-venomous and a few venomous in Missouri. Another common misconception you may hear out there is that the black rat snake will mate with a copperhead. Again, this is misinformation. So it's always important when you're learning about snakes to understand what is reality and also what is misinformation. For my next expert, I wanted to ask how snakes benefit mankind and the ecosystem. Hi, I'm Nancy Peterson and I teach biology at Mineral Area College. I'm here with my friend Horatio, who's a ball python. We've had him quite a long time. Uh, he actually was given to me by one of my students and I've had him probably 12 years. Um, and the reason why I want to talk to you today is the benefits of snakes. And most people think snakes are terrible and, and they carry venom and bite you, but they really, the good outweighs the bad. Most snakes are very, very beneficial. Uh, they keep rodent populations down, mice and rats. Uh, the bubonic plague in Europe was carried on, uh, spread by a flea, carried by rats and mice that went everywhere. And so keeping rodent population down would have helped that. Um, Venomous snakes are beneficial also. Uh, we use their venom in a lot of our medicines that treat cancer, hypertension, and even if they, uh, and even the venomous snakes will keep rodent populations down. And snakes like prairie king snakes and spotted king snakes will keep venomous snakes uh, populations down and in check. So snakes are not only predators, but they can also be, uh, not only predators, but they're also the prey. They can also be eaten by other animals. Uh, there was a feed store that found snakes in in the in the back room and decided, oh, we're going to get rid of every snake here, and they did. They they eliminated every snake, and when that happened, the rats and the mice took over, created tons of damage. Not only did it eat the grain, not only did it, they were everywhere. Everywhere they looked, they would they would see a rodent, but um, they ate through wires. Uh, they destroyed. Um, some of the furnishings by gnawing, they just created a, thousands of dollars worth of damage. Many house fires and barn fires are caused by rodents eating through wires. So if you have snakes in your barn, you won't have rodents and it'll take care of things. 
With as many farm and agricultural areas as we have in Missouri, I wanted to talk to a local conservation agent to ask how reptiles affect agricultural practices in Missouri. Yeah, I'm Rob Solkowski. I'm the conservation agent for St. Genevieve County, Missouri. And I'm here to talk about the role of reptiles with agriculture. And one of the main roles, and really the only one I know of, is the fact that it's rodent control. You know, if you have rodents in your feed bin, you have rodents in your barn, rodents in the field, whether it's mice, rats, voles, weasel, weevils or whatever, you've got black rat snakes that come in and control those things and obviously that's what they eat. Other snakes eat them as well, but the black rat snake is probably the most common in Missouri and well known for its exclusive eating of rats and mice. So obviously farmers when they see a black rat snake, and most farmers do this, you know, they leave it alone. You know, sometimes they have a little bit of concern when they're in their chicken pen because black sna rat snakes do have a tendency to uh, eat chicken eggs. Uh, it's not real common, but every once in a while you'll see it. More so with wild birds with the smaller eggs, but occasionally they, they do have the bad reputation of going into a chicken house and eating a chicken egg. But, you know, you got to weigh the, the benefit for the actual loss of eggs. You know, they're eating all the, the mice and stuff that are eating your chicken feed, so they're saving you money in the long run. So reptiles are a good thing for agriculture in Missouri. In certain areas of America, snakes are bought from other countries and sold as pets, but then let go into the wild, messing up the local ecosystem. I wanted to ask Mr. Sikowski if Missouri has this problem with invasive species, and if there's any way to stop it. We're going to talk a little bit about invasive species reptiles uh, problems in Missouri. And to be honest with you, you know, most of the problems are down south like in Florida, those kind of areas, the, the invasive species that are released in Missouri tend to not make it through the winter. So some of our problems might be the boa constrictor, you know, invading and taking over the, the habitat of native reptiles. But again, they don't usually survive the winter too well because they're more of a glade or a southern reptile. So the, the problem with invasive species on reptiles in Missouri isn't that much of an issue. But again, it stems from pet owners, you know, folks that raise an animal for a little while and it gets either too expensive or too big, and then they go ahead and release it. So we got to make sure we keep those animals either in the pet store, in the house, and not released because they, they can have an effect. With all the information given by our experts, I just had one more question. How can people become more educated about reptiles? People become, can become more knowledgeable about snakes by getting out into nature and seeing snakes. Uh, definitely with somebody who knows what they're doing, either a conservation agent or a biologist or somebody who's just a uh, snake enthusiast, and they can uh, learn about them and maybe pick them up after they know exactly what they are and encounter them and find out that snakes are not the vicious, ugly things of, of, of lower and that they actually are very beneficial and beautiful. Most of them are very, very pretty and very enjoyable and, and uh, beneficial. After talking with some people who really care and respect these animals, hopefully all of us can get to know a little bit more about these useful and amazing creatures.